Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how we can create a left side and a right side version of our blend shapes. And uh, in the previous example I just created this sort of open mouth shape. Now that's not really a great example um, in general. I think what I'm going to do is just come up and take another one that I've created somewhere else, maybe something like um, the mouth stretch, okay, and cut this in half. So the way that we cut this in half is going to be important, however. And we're going to need to take a look at a couple factors in the way that the uh, model is created, including how the UVs are laid out. So in order to do this, I also need to pop back over into Maya and have a quick look there. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, here we are inside of Maya. And uh, as you can tell, this is not my head that um, I was just working on. This is uh, similar to what you would find when you export a head from MakeHuman. This is, in fact, actually the default MakeHuman uh, model without any changes at all. The only reason why I um, am using this instead of my head is that I've already done all what I, everything that I'm going to show you. I've already done. Um, so I need to work on a version of this before I've made any changes. So Basically, um, if I click on this head, and if I go into the Windows um, Modeling Editors, UV Editor. So the UV Editor is where we're going to be able to adjust all of the um, layout for our texture detail. And this is going to be important because the way that in ZBrush we're going to be able to separate the left-hand side from the right-hand side is based on a gradient texture. So um, what I want to do here first is to take up as much space as possible in my UV layout. The reason why the head is not really aligned um, or not really taking up as much space as possible is that there actually used to be a body here as well. And I've just separated the head from the body and deleted the body. Uh, and the body would have taken up the rest of this area. Now, I can maximize the amount of um, space that is taken up here uh, simply by having my UV selected, which they are and going to Arrange and Layout, and using the Layout option. Now I do need to point out that this is Maya 2017. Uh, if you're using an earlier version of Maya, the UV Editor looks different, and you would probably find most of these options um, along a menu up here, but it's changed quite a bit in Maya 2017. So what this has done is it scaled everything up um, to the same um, proportion, that's the word I'm looking for, proportion, and um, it has made it so that the head here, uh, which is the largest piece, is taking up as much area as it can while still sticking inside this uh, square, which is the zero to one texture space. I'm not really going to go into what that is and all of that, but I am just going to indicate that that's important. However, um, I do want to be able to go in here and rearrange some of this so that it better fits our needs. And specifically, I want to rotate the head. So what I can do here is uh, right click and choose UV shell. I'm going to click uh, the head shell. And I want to rotate this uh, 90 degrees. So I'll come into the transform section and I'll come down to where it says tools and it already says rotate 90 degrees. And I'm just going to click on the little rotate clockwise button and it rotates that 90 degrees. Now it's not absolutely important exactly where I put this head so long as I fit it um, somewhere inside these bounds here. So I'm just using the move tool right now and I'm just going to try to fit it in here as close as possible. Okay. There we go, that looks good. And really what I'm trying to do, if I move some of these other pieces out of the way, is to get the head sitting right along this center axis, okay? Um, because that's actually going to be very important for me. I'm going to move some of these other pieces out of the way. These are the ears. I think those are the ears. Actually, no, those are the interior of the eyeballs. The ears are still attached, um, and uh, that's fine. We can leave those attached. I think in my version that I detach the ears, but it's not absolutely necessary. All right. Now, um, because this head is, in my opinion, slightly large, I'm just going to go ahead and select all of the pieces, and let's go in and uh, just scale it down slightly, because it looks like there is a tiny bit of overlap outside the UV space. 
and I just want to make sure it's just not so you know it's not a real problem. If I if I select everything and I scale it, they all get scaled proportionally. And the reason why I want to do this is so that I can grab this shell here and grab the move tool and make sure that this line right here lines up right on the center. So to me that's very important because it, that makes a difference inside of Photoshop later on. So it looks pretty good. It might not be 100%, but it's close enough for our purposes. That's the, the 0.5 line. Uh, this part right here is the neck. And I want to do the same thing here. I just want to get this to line up along that center line. So as close as I can get it. Looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, I'll just move that down a little bit. This is the mouth interior. Same deal. Pull that in. There we go. Now, being that these are the uh, interior of the eye sockets, they don't actually sit along the center line, so it's really not really relevant um, exactly where they go. So I'll just leave them to either side like that. Okay. So so long as we have it set up like this, this is going to work for us. I can close out of the UV editor now, and I could go ahead and export out my head. Um, so in fact, I'll just do that for the sake of example. So I'll just say file. Uh, export selection, and then we would say what we want to export it as, um, and this could be just our base, for instance. All right, and that will take with it the um, the UVs that we just created. But in order for us to be able to really work around with these UVs, um, I do need to go back into the UV editor, and um, I need to export out the uh, this map of UVs in a format that can be read in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to Image, UV Snapshot. Now this is uh, a little bit different than it was in like previous versions of Maya. In previous versions, you would just come up over here to, uh, I forget exactly what the name of the, the menu was on the far left side, but it was the menu on the far left side. And there was an option for UV Snapshot as well. Now it's over here under Image, UV Snapshot. And so long as you have your geometry selected, this will be fine. So we're just going to tell it to save this out. I'm going to just save it in a location that I can easily grab it. Um, and this is just going to be our base underscore UV. All right. Um, and the size, this will be somewhat important because we want it to be of a particular pixel size so that we have enough room to create a reasonable gradient. Um, so I'm going to set this to 1024 by 1024. It creates a square image. Very important in terms of the way that 3D software interprets the world. They like to work in square images, and especially in powers of two. Um, I'm going to change the image format here, and I'll just save it out as um, either a TIFF or a Photoshop document, PSD. Just checking my options here. I'll save it out as a TIFF. All right, so it's just an uncompressed format. And we'll just keep the defaults right now. It's just the 0 to 1 texture space. That's fine. And this just gets saved out. You can see it's saved out here to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead now and open that up in Photoshop. OK, so here is the image in Photoshop that we saved out of Maya. And as you can see, it's just that square space with the UVs. Now, um, what I find is that it's sometimes good, sometimes bad to have a black and white image like this. The background I can invert to be uh, just control I and now get something that sometimes is a little bit easier for me to understand. But basically what I want to do is to create a gradient here that extends from one edge of the mouth to the opposite edge of the mouth and is perfectly like a mid gray right in the middle. And I'll show why that's important here in a moment. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Sorry, I just had to change the size of Photoshop there. So let's create a new layer. And on this layer, we will um, go to our gradient options over here. And right now it goes from white to black, and that's fine. So I'm going to come over here, and on the left side of the mouth, um, and this, is, this will take a little bit of practice to see what works best in ZBrush, but for right now I'm going to start on the left corner of the mouth here. Um, and I'm just going to hold down shift and click and drag, and I'm going to go to the corresponding side 
um, on the other side of the mouth. So try to match it up as evenly as possible. And I get this gradient here. Now you can see that there's actually a bit of banding and pixelization that's going on there, uh, which is why you might find that maybe you actually need it to be uh, even a bigger image to export out so that this is a bit smoother. But this will work for our purposes for now, probably. Okay, and this little image here now, if we if we take a look at what it's actually doing, I just reduce the opacity, you can see that because we aligned the all the parts of the figure that actually have a center line to them right here, then this is cutting um, those pieces in half, more or less. And the way that it's cutting them in half, let me just um, pull this up a little bit, is that right along the center line here, if I did this correctly, um, this should be a value of um, of 50%. So let me just go ahead and I'm going to create a guide. So let's just say uh, view new guide. It's a vertical guide at um, 50%. right? And I'm just going to set this at 100% value. I'll go in with my little eyedropper right here, click somewhere very close to the center, and let's just see, that's coming in at um, a black value of 52%, so very, very close. All right, so that's what we want, because we want it so that we can actually invert this back and forth on either side, and that the center line itself is going to sit exactly perfectly even in terms of the distribution of black and white values, so that when we um, invert this, uh, uh, shape, we will get half of, basically one half of the model, uh, one half of the blend shape on the left side, and then invert it, we get one half the uh, blend shape on the right hand side, and then if we add them together, we get the whole blend shape again. Now that sounds really confusing, it should be not so bad here in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to save this out as um, a JPEG file. And so you could call this um, some kind of, um, oh, I don't know, just gradient or UV gradient or, or something um, that, you know, you could end up using um, that's easy to identify. it. So I've done this before. For instance, here's one that I've created before. And if I look at the, uh, the UVs right here, this is, the, this is slightly different than your one. Um, perhaps that I just created because I've actually separated the ears off, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. Um, the mouth is a little bit wider here, and probably the image overall, I'm not really sure the image size. This is in pixels. Oh, this is a 4K image, so 4096 by 4096, just quite large in general. Um, and I created a gradient here that goes across. It's a lot smoother, as you can tell. And if I take a look at exactly where that's corresponding to, the full white part is basically starting right here at this corner of the mouth and the full black part is over here and again this right in the middle there is going to be you know 50 percent or thereabouts that particular point was 44 percent so somewhere along in here find 50 percent looks like it's maybe it's a little bit biased over here um, however i do know that this actually works for my purposes so um, not too worried about that. And this might take a little bit of uh, practice, um, you know, and, and testing inside of ZBrush just to see what works best, where the exact location is uh, is best. So let's go ahead now and um, I'll take in uh, this back into ZBrush. So let's just pop over there real quick. All right. So if you um, are working in, in ZBrush and you have just finished creating your UVs in Maya, but you've already started sculpting in ZBrush, no worries. All right. The great thing is, is that if you export out your head mesh from ZBrush, bring that into Maya, create the UVs in Maya, lay them out properly to use in Photoshop, you can then come back into ZBrush. And if we go to the, um, back to the original default uh, base, la base layer, turn that on, um, and come down to the uh, subdivision level that you exported from. If you import in the new version of your head that has the updated UVs, 
then the only thing that's changed is the UVs. The geometry stays exactly the same. And so if you go to say import now and you import that in, the UVs will update. You won't necessarily see it, there's nothing really to see, but the UVs will update. And so long as you haven't changed anything about the geometry, you won't see any other differences here. But what that will mean though is that now the texture file that you've created, the gradient file that you created in Photoshop is actually going to align properly to the geometry. So it's very important that you bring that in first. Okay, so let's go ahead now and um, I will pop back up here to uh, subdivision level uh, 7. Okay, And just for the sake of example here, I'm going to go to my alpha. And I'm going to go in and import in my um, my texture here. So let's just quickly go and grab the one that I want to work from. So, so I've saved this out um, as a PSD and as a TIFF file. Um, I'm also, also going to save it out as a JPEG real quick. Just because I find that um, JPEGs sometimes are a little bit more reliable because they're flattened. So we'll just call this blend shape gradient.jpg. There we go. And OK. Oops, pop back over here, ZBrush. There we go. Um, I'm going to import the JPEG instead. There it is. All right. Now that's been imported into my alpha. And um, what I want to do is apply this uh, alpha texture as a mask across the whole face. So to do this, I'm going to go down to the masking section here, and I'm going to choose uh, Mask by Alpha. And this, and click on Mask by Alpha again. What this does is it takes the texture that I have up here in the alpha um, palette and applies it as an alpha to my model because this is based on the UVs that we identified and that we created, you'll see that that gradient is now going nicely across the surface here. Okay, that's very important for us. Now, I just wanted to show that to you so that you understand how to, that what the importance is of this. Um, so let me just clear that real quick, clear that mask, because the next thing that I want to do is to show what we need to do to create uh, the target geometry that we need to use in order to separate the blend shapes off. All right, so if I come into um, the section here that says morph target, I'm just going to set this back to as if it as if it's what you see probably the defaults. Um, I am telling ZBrush to create what's called a morph target, and a morph target is a state of the geometry at a particular version, at a particular at a particular shape and all of that, that we might want to get back to later. And um, we could paint back using the morph target brush, um, or we could do some other features um, in the morph target dialog here that allows us to return to what we see here right now. So if I click on store MT, store morph target, that loads into ZBrush's memory the shape as it appears right now, and importantly, at this subdivision level. It's very important that you understand it is subdivision level uh, specific. So now what we can do is come back up to our layers, uh, turn our subdivision level back up to the top um, subdivision level, and let's just grab what we were dealing with. It was a mouth wide or mouth stretch. Turn that on. And I'm going to turn on recording because we are going to be making some changes here. So we need to be able to have the record button on. Okay, let's pop on down now to level three. And let's go and say, hey, turn on our mask. So go to masking and mask by alpha. All right. And we want to go ahead and tell ZBrush to return to the original default shape wherever this is not masked. So anything on the masked side is going to stay looking like it does right now, and whatever's on the unmasked side is going to return to the original shape. So in order to return that side to the original shape, we come back to the Morph Target section, 
and we're going to change our morph value here. Click on that, type in 100 to set it to its maximum value, and see that that returns now to the original shape. And if I clear the mask, you see that now I just have on one side, and spe specifically just that nice uh, gradient transition happening here, uh, just one side of the mouth stretch. So we could go ahead and export out that as um, the left version of this blend shape. And I could undo a couple times to get back to the previous state. And uh, just let this thing calculate here. Undo again to uh, remove the, the morph target uh, change. And now I'm just going to control click to uh, switch the mask around. And then we'll repeat that same process, type in 100 under morph. And I can export out now the right hand side. And I would do this for almost all of the uh, layers that I have. Some of these uh, blend shapes are going to be um, not something that I change on um, you know, both sides, but that's very rare. Only ones like jaw open, where I could not physically uh, you know, change my jaw so that it you know, has a left side versus a right side. Those are the only ones, for instance, that I, um, I wouldn't create a left and a right version for. So use your judgment, but most of them you will. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, you export those out, and um, in a future tutorial, we'll also take a look at how we set everything up in Maya um, to create the blend shape networks.